fish number one. All right, every time. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Nice to see you again. Welcome back to the never ending saga that is Mega Tank. This is my DIY build wooden aquarium. It's eight foot long, four feet wide, three feet deep, and has been leaky. Let's just leave it at that. But the keenly eyed amongst you will be able to tell it's now full of water. Two and a half thousand litres of glorious aqua. Um, Rescaped, resealed, redone, re everythinged. Touch wood, whatever I can find for the last time. Probably not though. If you haven't followed along, there's a whole playlist of videos you can go and look at the various trials and tribulations. But it leaked. I found the leak. I plugged the leak. It leaked more. I found the leak. Just that for about six months. But this time, I went in and I reinforced everything. So there were a few trials and tribulations getting this ready again. Unfortunately, this is day three or four of it being refilled and the SD card that I filmed the first few days of this died. Um, so you've got none of that, but basically you've just missed me adding water and rescaping it. But what I've done is I've reinforced the front the last time it leaked, reinforced the back with these steel brackets because I can no longer get behind the tank because it's all attached and too heavy, uh, and the sides. Fiberglassed over that, a couple of layers of fiberglass, a couple of layers of liquid rubber, and touch wood, we're all good. Poet didn't know it. So I'll, I think one of the lessons that I've learned is that the important part is to make sure you give everything enough curing time, just to make sure that everything dries properly. So this has taken a couple of weeks to get to this point before I was ready to refill it, but we've done that. Gone for a very minimal scape. There's some rocks, some wood, some fake plants, because the fish that are going to end up going in here um, snack on real plants as I learned to my cost so it's more about having lots of swimming space because there's going to be some big fish in here so those of you who have been following along for a while might rightly be asking why are you persevering with this thing it's I've been chasing problems around this tank all the time and if it wasn't for the fact that I do already have the fish in this tank they are secreted around different tanks around the fish room but they need a tank of this size to be comfortable and happy so it's more about the fish welfare at this point. I need to have a big tank, and this is my best chance of having a big tank to house the fish that I've already got. If I didn't have those fish, I would have admitted defeat. I openly admit I didn't know what I was doing. I was having a crack at this rather than being an expert at it. I've learned lots of lessons along the way, and some of them I might even remember one day. But we are where we are, and this is Mega Tank. It's here to stay for as long as I can keep fixing it. Um, and on that point, I have made a few changes. So, previously, the sump was under here. There's a fan there just trying an explainable spill. Um, and it was annoying me a little bit because it was quite tight and I couldn't get my hands in easily. I couldn't get in to do maintenance easily. Um, so that's the main tank here and we've got all the pipe work on this side. What we've got here is two drains either side and in the middle, two returns. And they went underneath and under there. It was neat and everything and that was fine. But what I've done is I've moved the sump over to this side. So the sump is just basically a four foot by three foot box, I think, or four foot by two foot box, um, where I've, I've sectioned it off with various types of media and things like that. And I've just moved it over there just because it's a little bit easier to get into. I'm going to redo this pipework so as it's not, it doesn't really block my access uh, to all these tanks, but it's kind of in the way. So I'll rerun them so as they go more that side um, it's a bit easier to plug the heaters in, I can clearly see them. I think it just works a little bit better. But this explainable water patch was from just a hose split. Everything that could go wrong with this did go wrong with it. The hose split, one of these, I accidentally bumped into it and knackered it. Um, I ripped something else, ripped one of the valves off, so I've only got one valve now. Um, yeah. The ham-fisted approach to how to make a big fish tank. But I think that will work much better. The fact that we've got that sump over there, I can see everything in it. What I've also done is rerouted my automatic water change system. So what I do on this side, that white line there normally is poking in there. Constant drip or dribble going into that tank. And then when that gets too full over here, that's a sump pump in there with a wire, a wire, a pipe that goes up to the roof, as you can see, very permanent, <laughs> securing to there, 
uh, across and down into my overflow. So I shouldn't have to do manual water changes just to maintain parameters and things like that, but I still might do them for like getting detritus and all that kind of stuff. But previously, when it was down here, it didn't really work doing it that way, so I had it just trailing along the floor, which was a bit of a trip hazard and just generally annoying. So there are the updates that I've made. I've also got two big sponge filters in either corner, um, more just to um, break up water surface and things like that, rather than any great biological filtration that we're doing. But as you can see, I've got some of these big, tall plastic plants, bog wood, big rocks. It doesn't come across very well, but basically these are ginormous and where they almost killed me several times getting them in and out of the tank. But I've got them in such a way that it creates a little bit for the snakehead, which is one of the fish that's going to live in here. He likes to get in places, so he's got a, a rock cave there, a wood cave over here, and some very other, various other places for fish to hide. But, like I said, we're on day three, four of this. Everything's up to temperature. There's only one thing left to do, and that's get the fish in. And the fish that we're talking about, we've got some in this tank, the Oscars, the Silver Dollars. Severums, um, and then through there is the big fish. So in this spare tank, this is just a spare five foot tank we've got here, we've got the Grammy. It's currently nameless, need a few more suggestions for that. I've had a couple. And then Gordon the Snakehead. So he is a ginormous, am I overusing the word ginormous? He is a large Emperor Snakehead who's mastered the art of camouflage and will not be focused on. Too much reflection. But yeah, he's a good couple of feet long. And the Grammy's not too bad either. They've actually done really well in this tank. They've actually... No aggression or fighting. No signs of stress or anything like that. They looked quite good. But it's just not big enough. And... It's leaking as well. Yay! So I'm going to add the small big fish first, give them a chance to get settled, and then we'll move the big big fish in. So, in anyone's terms, this is a big fish net, but for the big fish fish, we need an even bigger fish net. Made sure that all the temperatures match in all the tanks, so it's just a case of hoik, and then let's see how wet I get. Fish number one, the small Oscar, no longer small. I'm going with the plop and drop method, just to minimize stress, get everything done as quickly as possible. Silver dollars. Severum. And these are all fish that have all lived together in this tank for months quite happily. Um, so you might not think they're all compatible with each other, but they've been doing pretty well. Big Oscar putting up a bit more of a fight. All right. Be free. I just put a handful of black sand into my nice clear sand. More silver dollars. Every time. Everyone seems okay. Big fish. Don't know if you can see the big fish. But that's just out there. I'll be back in a second. Probably soaked to the skin. That's a fairly easy catch, even though he's freaking out a little bit. Chill and gets me nice and wet. I just wanted to show you the size. So this is the Garami. Well over a foot. There we go. He's in there. Snakehead. And he is a chonky boy. Really good weight to him as well. There we go. Only a mild soaking. I think I've come out of that quite well. And there we go. Everybody in and happy. Exploring the caves. Silver Dollars just doing the patrols, the Oscar's in there, Grammy's kind of skulking down at the back there. He does not like to be moved. But all the rest of them, 
all doing pretty good. Yeah, I'm really happy with this tank because it is a good mix of personalities. A lot of these fish can be problematic with the fish that they're in with, but they all seem to get on really well, which will be the case until they don't, I suppose. But for now, Gordon has a nice home. He is the gentle giant, gentle-ish giant. Really impressive fish. And that's it. I just wanted to make a positive update about Mega Tank for once. Um, they've only been in a few minutes, but everything looks fine. Like I say, the Grammy's sulking a little bit in the corner, but he'll come round. Everyone's happy, I'm happy. The plumbing changes that I've made, I think, are going to work out for the better, make maintenance a lot easier on this. And yeah, touch wood, hopefully we don't have too many more problems. And I can make lots more positive videos about this. Um, so, if you're interested in this type of thing, we've got lots of other tanks around here. I know I concentrate on this one, but it has been specifically problematic. Click that subscribe button, click like if you like the video and all that good stuff. If you want to join me to ask me any questions in the live, Friday night, 9pm, most Fridays, come and join the live stream. But most importantly, thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye!